Welcome back to another episode of Open Source Cafe. I'm super excited for this one. We have you know, my main man Logan over here with us. Logan, thanks a lot for joining. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, sure, Kunal. I'm, I'm super excited to be here and uh, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to come on and chat. But uh, yeah, my name is Logan Kilpatrick. Right now I'm the, the community manager for the Julia programming language, do a bunch of other open source stuff and um, also some, some machine learning things. This video is sponsored by Teleport. Are you juggling with shared secrets, SSH keys, or hopping between VPNs and multiple access points? Check out Teleport to quickly access your computing resources from anywhere. Teleport allows engineers and security professionals to unify access for SSH servers, Kubernetes clusters, web applications, and databases across all environments. With a unified resource catalog, there is no need to maintain inventories. You can also work together to troubleshoot a problem with your colleagues on a remote server or on each other's laptops and record these sessions as well using shared sessions. Teleport also provides ready-to-use auth for your internal web applications. Easily implement security and compliance with Teleport to adopt industry best practices for access across all protocols and all environments with minimal configuration. How does it work? Teleport is a single binary which enables secure access to SSH nodes, Kubernetes clusters, web apps, and databases. Deployed as a single binary, it seamlessly integrates with the rest of your stack. Get started with Teleport now and try it for free. Check out the links in the description below for more information. Thanks for sharing, Logan. And yeah, we'll talk more about that. But this uh, particular session, we'll talk more about, you know, like Logan's life and how he got involved in tech. And uh, hopefully you'll get inspired because Logan has done quite a few things. If you check out his LinkedIn, maybe I'll link it in the description below uh, and all the other communities that you can be a part of uh, related to open source and stuff. So make sure you check out the links in the description below and uh, yeah, get involved. Uh, so Logan, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what you do, Julia, and uh, what is your, uh, you know, what is the day in life of Logan like now that you are working remotely? Yeah, that's a great question. So yeah, my, my life is all over the place, which I think is what keeps me engaged with the amount of craziness that I have going on. So again, as, as I said before, I'm the community manager for the Julia programming language. So doing things all over the board, helping, you know, run some of our student programs like Google Summer of Code, uh, you know, working on documentation stuff, working on diversity and inclusion initiatives. So really just helping sort of make sure that we're, we're moving in the right direction as far as the community goes, uh, which is a ton of fun. Um, I do that part time outside of that. I'm a, a full time applied machine learning engineer um, working in, in big tech companies. Um, and then outside of my my sort of full time working jobs, I'm also a um, part time graduate student at Harvard studying software engineering and then a part time graduate student at Northwestern University's Pritzker School of Law. So I've got too much going on. Um, eventually, it'll catch How up to me. And how do you, how do you manage and you know like set your priorities uh with all these things and what made you get involved in so many things because open source for example it's not a give or take relationship right you do it on your own time so what yeah. made you what motivated you to you know actually go in the leadership role for that yeah i th i think with open source the thing that and this is one of the things that I always struggle with because there's a finite amount of time in every single day. But when I see things as a as a user of whatever the technology is, and like when I have problems doing something, like that is my instantaneous motivation. I'm like, if I can't figure this out, there's a good chance that there's other people who are in the exact same boat as me who aren't going to be able to figure this out. So I'm I'm really motivated by that. Whether it's you know me asking a question like. You know, right now I'm trying to get TensorFlow to work on my computer because I have the new M1 Mac and it's not working and I have to figure that out. Um, so th those sort of things always give me the motivation and I, I try to get it done, whatever it is, in that moment when I have the motivation, um, specifically in, in the open source space. Yeah, and uh, I think like it's also like once you get started, uh, it sort of becomes like, you, you know, your, your passion is well like, okay, I want to help people get contribute. I want to help them get started because because I, I I know what it's like for you know what what issue newcomers might be facing. Um, cool. Thanks a lot for sharing. But everyone knows about that. You know, you have done like I don't know 20, 30 events <laughs> on this thing already. Let's talk a little bit more about you know. Let's uh, rewind back in time to your high school days. What kind of a student were you? Like? So ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be like a surgeon right so what was do you, were you always in tech did, did you always want to be like 
uh, in Guy College? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I think I was always sort of technically interested. You know, my grandfather was an electrical engineer, so we were always like taking apart random stuff. But I was never like I, I wish sometimes I wish I was like five years older because I feel like my parents and my family sort of weren't um, aware. Like my dad was involved in tech too. Like he worked at Motorola back in the day when Motorola was like actually a cool company. And mm -hmm. so I was like, again, I was around tech the whole time, but I just didn't, I was like a little too early in my life. Like I was too young to like really get a chance to like be programming when I was early. Like when I was young, the technology wasn't good enough yet. Um, so, it, you know, I, I wish I had been more involved, but, uh, you know, when I was in high school and things like that, just playing lots of sports, mm -hmm. doing that sort of stuff, taking, you know, a, a couple of uh, computer science classes and and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, nothing crazy. I, you know, you see stories now about kids who are programming when they're like five years old. I'm like, definitely <laughs> wasn't me. Didn't didn't wasn't able to write code until probably I actually got to college. Exactly the same for me. And people often ask, well, have you been coding since like uh, high school? I'm like, no, why, why do you, why do you say that? Because, you know, so many people are doing, doing so. I was in a, you know, there was this program, Google coding, uh, yeah. on open source. Their students were like this high school students, 13, 14 year old kids. They were texting in binary. And I was like, dude, what, what was <laughs> I doing when I, <laughs> what was I doing when I was 13? I can't even remember. I was playing Call of Duty or something, but, yep. uh, Right. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, and what about like college and uh, how you got involved? Can you tell us a little bit more about your uh, college life and uh, you know, both in terms of tech and like the actual you know, college stuff? Yeah. So I, I think I have sort of a non, definitely a non-traditional path through college. So out of high school, I, I really wanted to go to, um, I think, you know, going back a step into into high school, I think as a student, you know, my first two years of high school, it, it wasn't that I didn't care about school, but I think I just wasn't sort of mentally mature enough to understand like, hey, this is what I need to do. This is how I need to do it. Like looking back, it's it's almost comical that I, I like I didn't understand that stuff because it's so clear to me now. Um, so I think probably junior year of high school is when I finally realized, hey, I actually need to you know, focus on school and start doing well. Um, obviously, for people who are familiar with applying to college, you sort of can't just pick up your interest in intensity junior year and, and expect to do well. It's sort of a, you know, cascading effect. So um, I knew school was important and I wanted to do well by the time junior year came around. But again, it was a little bit too late at that point for me. So you know, I got into a few schools in college. I could have gone to, you know, Purdue or something like that. But um, really, I was I was sort of unsatisfied and I, I wanted to figure out, OK, how can I, you know, progress and, and take things mm -hmm. to the next level as far as school went. So um, I actually spent the first two years of my undergraduate studies at Community College in California. Um, so I moved to California to go to Community College, a, a small college called mm -hmm. uh, De Anza College, which is literally like uh, less than a mile away from from Apple's headquarters. Um, and while I was at community college, I actually started working at the Apple store. And uh, that was, uh, again, both of those experiences were were super important for me. You know, on one side, community college in California, you know, the professors that I had, you know, my data structures professor was like a some machine learning or, or something director at Google, which was super cool and like definitely not the experience that you have in other sort of institutions. So I, I really loved that aspect of it. And then on the on the Apple Store side of things, you know, I was getting a chance to really focus on like the human side of technology. That was all the job was about. It was like people are going to come in and talk to you. And and I eventually transitioned to doing like basically tech support. Uh, for customers at the Apple store and people would come in with these problems and the technical problems were never really the challenge. It was always the people aspect of it. These people would come in, they were really upset, their phone wasn't working and, and they were going to take it out on me as a person who was trying to help them there, which was really just a, a difficult personal challenge. But um, I think it was awesome. And I, I think I learned a ton. And if I hadn't have had that experience, I think my life would have been really different so I'm, I'm so grateful that i had the opportunity to do that this video is sponsored by daytree 
a tool that you can use to prevent Kubernetes misconfigurations from reaching production. Using DateTree, you can catch misconfigurations in the development phase and set or create policies to receive failure alerts. It's useful for different stages of deployment and helps you measure resource usage by applying mandatory labels to workloads. 10,000 plus engineers are already using DateTree. Check out the links in the description below to get started today. And you're, and you're still studying, right? You're working and you're doing community work and you're still studying. So already, you know, you interned at so many places, you have a great job and you do community work. What, what motivated you to pursue higher studies even after all of these things? Which is, you know, great, by the way, I, I personally would also, I'm, I'm really interested in like, you know, teaching and also learning more and studying more, maybe even a PhD or whatever at, at a particular point of time. But what motivated you, uh, you know, after all of these things, like, okay, I want to study more. Yeah, that's another good question. I think there's a lot of things that you can't do um, without having a, uh, a graduate degree. And I think one of those things that I've always been motivated and wanted to do is actually be a community college professor. Like I think I had such a, was fortunate enough to have such a good experience um, at community college and, and learn a ton and have really great professors who inspired me. And I, I don't think that that's the case everywhere. Like I don't think, you know, if I, if I look at community college, you know, in places where, where I was from in Chicago, um, you know, I don't think the community college system there from a tech perspective is as good as it is in the in the Bay Area in California where I am now. Um, so I think I, I really want to get to the point where I can teach community college classes and, and hopefully helps help students in that respect. Um, also, again, I, I just really I think school is almost like cheating when it comes to learning. Like there's a they're they're prescribing the learning path for you. It's like predefined. It's easy. And for me, it, it just makes so much sense. You know, there's a lot of people out there and, and I think I'm like that in a certain sense, but you know, if you want to learn something, all the information that you need to learn is out of the internet. So you don't have to go to school. You can go learn it for free on the internet. If that's the way that you work best, then you should do it. But I think the, the challenge for me with that is that it always requires like a lot of, a lot of discipline, a lot of self-motivation and I think both of those things are fleeting. Like I, I have discipline, I have self-motivation, but it's a finite amount. So if I spend all of that trying to focus on learning a bunch of new stuff, like I'm gonna, I'm not gonna have the energy to do anything else. So I think school is nice because it's very constrained. It's, you know, here's what you're gonna do. Here's how you're gonna learn these things. And it just makes it easy to, to acquire all that new knowledge. Most definitely. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think like, there's no limit to that, you know, like uh, limit for uh, an age limit to get a degree or a college or whatever. I know many people who are in there, like, well, not many people. I, mean, I know two people <laughs> who are in their 50s who are pursuing their bachelor's right now. Uh, so that's, I think, I think that really is a great thing. And yeah. uh, the question I have for you is, I know I, I saw your tweet once, you, you had a few, uh, few more things you wanted to do in the world, right, related to environment. And I can't, I can't seem to remember the other others. Can you maybe touch upon that a little bit, and then I ha I'll have a follow-up question for you. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Yeah, I tweeted out that I, I said I, I think the biggest opportunities, at least for me, in the next few years, are sort of, you know, the the four different areas of you know machine learning, community stuff, climate change, and I don't remember if there was a, a fourth one or not, but those those three areas are just the most fascinating things to me right now like the climate change is going to affect all of us and it's it's such a difficult and, and thorny problem and i think the combination of that and machine learning together are are going to be a huge part of the solution to that problem um, and then sort of independent of that seeing you know the impact of you know the julia community and, and other communities that i've had a chance to be a part of i'm, I'm just super bullish on you know, the impact that communities are going to have on everything that we do. I think right now there's a lot of sort of organic communities that have come into place that just sort of don't have the structure that they need to succeed and continue to grow. So I'm excited to see like community manager positions become more prevalent and sort of all the other uh, community related jobs uh, sort of become more popular and, and really push the community narrative forward. And 
this is a very you know important topic and uh, i know a lot of people are working towards it a lot of you know small things we can do a lot of big things we can do so the one question i have for you is like so in order to make the world you know a better place in terms of all these things what can we do as individuals according to you this is a tough one i i really think yeah. that it it's such a hard question and i know that for me personally i do a bunch of things that i'm like you know i want to make sure that i'm taking all these individual steps so that i'm not having an outsized impact on the environment uh whether or not that is going to make any impact at all unlikely it is um, i think it, so it because is. it's yeah. it's like with is this uh there's this saying with you know the ocean is made of many droplets so you do That's small true. small things uh, it, it does affect quite a lot but yeah continue no i i, I agree and I, I like that and i i do feel the same way i i think on certain days when i'm optimistic i'm like you know i i really do think that that's true uh the other piece too is that um it, it's really difficult to convince other people of other things and i think well, i i forgot there's a there's a good quote out there and i don't remember what it is off the top of my head but it's something like uh it's something like perhaps the only way to um affect change is is by example um and i think that's that's sort of the way that i've i've chosen to go um i think that's that's sort of one lens of it and the other and and i don't want to dive into this lens but the other lens is you know using your your voice politically to you know vote for people who you think have the same shared you know philosophy as you as far as what needs to happen for the environment um and then the third one is to is sort of like the private uh the private market solution to the problem which is you know go work at Tesla go work at any of these other companies that mm-hmm. are sort of working on this and and sort of dedicate your personal career to pushing that aspect of things forward most definitely and, and looking at the that's, yeah go ahead yeah No, I was just say that's where a lot of the exciting stuff is happening in my opinion. Like if you want to go and I think about this all the time like make sure that I when I'm thinking about my own life, my own career, like I want to make sure that I'm working on things that are having that positive upstream impact. Like if I'm like I just mm-hmm. I have a hard time like you know if you're working at a petroleum company i'm like i don't know I'm not sure how you're how you sort of grapple with that um, emotionally and mentally like every day many many other in many countries i know this is going to be banned in like the next 10 years yeah uh, i saw in the news the petroleum stuff and uh, because people are also running out of it but looking at the broader picture say you had 100 100 um uh, say you had 10 billion dollars right uh on that scale or something 50 billion or something on that scale how, how would you uh i think about this a lot that's why i'm asking these questions like if i had uh, if i wanted to make a change in, in the education sector and i had this much amount of money i'll open up a institute in which uh, like you know people will be graded on the basis of their skills i'll directly you know get hiring managers and stuff you know all the things like the perfect college i have had this dream for a while <laughs> i want to make the perfect college So similarly do you have a, like a dream like that uh of a, of the perfect world what would that look like That's a good question I think from from an environment standpoint you're talking about yeah, yeah I think what and this is again not based on any empirical evidence and I haven't put a ton of thought into it so I think maybe I need to in case anyone gives me 10 billion dollars but um I I think something that has always made sense to me is just looking around like solar solar power just makes sense and what makes even more sense to me is giving solar power to people for free who have been disproportionately impacted by you know all the bad things that happen in life um and i think you know figuring out who those people are figuring out people who are underserved and underprivileged and giving them free solar panels i'm like that just makes complete sense to me i'm like not only one are we saving the environment but two we're also helping these people who again have been you know disproportionately affected by the bad parts of of the system in the world that we've created and i think um i i'm really like again and this doesn't even extend just to the united states like uh you know 
to me, if if I was Jeff Bezos, that would be the only thing that I wake up every day and do. Like I'm going to all these countries that don't have electricity and giving them electricity because with electricity they can, you know, do all the other things that they need to do. They can pump water out of wells. They can have electricity for their classrooms. They can do all the have the internet. Um, so yeah, I think electricity and and solar power is is the way to go. Clean, $10 billion. Dollars. clean and clean energy basically. Yeah. Exactly. And so, I mean, we have all the energy that we need coming into the earth every single day from the sun on, on clean energy. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't, I think we need to take advantage of that. But more and more electrical vehicles and stuff in India also. So India is really, you know, currently we are behind in terms of electrical vehicles and stuff. But I see like Tesla is setting up over here. Uh, many other Indian startups have already started their electrical vehicles. So it's a progress we have started and I, I know like fuel is gonna run out someday or whatever i see in the news and many like i think i think in europe they have said that after 10 years no more fuel vehicles or something uh electric so, vehicles let's see. Are, are, are just better too honestly like if yeah, you yeah, ever yeah. drive like come kunal come to the us and just drive around <laughs> some electric vehicles with me like it, they're just a better <laughs> experience like gas cars are just not cool and just don't they're just not as good as electric cars just objectively speaking and they're better for the planet which i think mm -hmm. again if you think about the the brilliance of of tesla it's you know let's build a better product and then a side effect of that is oh, okay it's also an electric car which is super cool like they mm -hmm. they really did a good job with with that aspect of it yeah, I'm really looking forward to what the future holds because in the last 10 months, oh, sorry, in the last 10 years, this has been like a very drastic change, you know, in terms of electric vehicles and stuff. Because the world is progressing so fast, let's see what happens. And yeah, surely, maybe next month, KubeCon uh, <laughs> in Los Angeles, but I'm pretty much not sure because of the travel ban going on, but I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, let me All know. Right. I'll, um, I'll make the drive down. Cool. Um, all right. So the next question I have is uh, a little bit more about your hobbies. And to sum up this question, what would you be doing, you know, as a career, if not computer science? This cannot be related to tech, the answer to it. <laughs> yeah, that is a good question. I, I think in high school, at the latter end of high school, I was involved in this organization and program called DECA, which I don't even remember what it stands for, but basically it was like a business uh, simulation sort of thing where you would go into these competitions and I had a partner and they would you would go into this competition, you'd be wearing a suit and everything and they'd give you a piece of paper and it was like a brief on a company and you would have to basically like build a business plan of like how to solve this problem for this company. Um, and you'd have like 10 minutes to prepare. And then you'd go into like a session with like a real person and you'd have to like convince them that the proposal that you put together makes sense and is gonna help them solve their problem. So I really enjoyed that. And I, me and my partner, we ended up making it to the, the sort of national championship for this uh, business competition. So I think, that is probably what I would do just because I, I really like, um, I like solving problems. I like interacting with people. And I think, again, in a certain sense, this is similar to what I do now, but it's just a different, it's a different lens of looking at the problem. I'm not looking at it from the sort of higher level. I'm like, okay, how can I actually write code that solves this problem? So it's slightly different, but again, mm -hmm. the same, the same sort of idea. So that's probably what I would have been doing. Yeah, and uh, what do you think about like uh, what what hobbies do you have uh, apart from you know tech and open source and education and all the other things you mentioned? That is a good. I need more hobbies. I think I, I play golf. <laughs> I think golf is one of the the few sports that I think I have actually started. Like I played all of the sports in in high school and I, I tried everything. Um, so I, I really liked sports, but I think for all of college didn't play any any organized sports didn't really like compete in anything um because i was just focused on trying to make it through school mm -hmm. um so now I've, I've started playing golf again which has been really fun to learn something completely new get outside even though california is all all smoky mm -hmm. now uh which sucks but um it's great to be outside and you can do it during covid which is which has been great so play a lot of golf i read a lot of books um play some video games we're gonna you and me are gonna play some video games one of these days that would be my 
that would be my answer like if someone asked me what you would do full time if not doing technical stuff probably gaming streaming and stuff yeah gaming streaming is a very is good fun, career yeah. if you do have a lot of subscribers and engagement it's a great career i think yeah uh, the yeah, the initial start is very hard <laughs> all right uh, uh, yeah, yeah. go ahead No, it's just the fulfillment piece. I think that's the part that I struggle with. Like if I had if I was just playing video games every single day and like that was my career, I think I would have a really tough time yeah. like waking up and feel like I was doing something yeah. that was important and impactful. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Uh that's why like even for me it's you know it, it's always about it's less about the what 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 is the word I'm looking for here. Me as a student it, because now i'm looking for like let's say full time offers and roles and stuff so it's less about the money if like the change is not that drastic and it's more about what the company does so even if exactly. they're paying let's say if there's a difference is 5000 us dollars uh, but the the one that is paying less less as compared to that it has much more you know they're doing much more good work people are using the project and it's actually making some impact i probably go over there right instead of yeah. the small raise So I think that's very important to figure out what you want to do and 10 years down the line you you look at the last 10 years of your life like okay I did something nice the work I'm doing has actually had some impact cool yeah. another fun question I have for you is if there was a billboard right uh, and that bill <laughs> I'm not really sure how I'm getting these questions in my mind right now because you know previously <laughs> I was struggling and now that the stream has started but anyway So there was a billboard uh and that billboard was being watched by every single person in the world and you can write anything on it what would that be wow that's a good question i one of the the sort of corny things that i i deeply believe is that you know anyone anyone can do anything and it's just a question i don't know what like the good messaging or way like i i have a in my own life i have a really hard time convincing people that they can do things and like it's something that i deeply believe like i have conversations with people all the time and i'm like hey i think you could really do this and people are like well you know i they always have a a good reason why they can't do it and in my mind like it's it's just like there's not a question of whether it's true or not like it's 100% certain that they could do this thing so what do you think like no i was just saying what do you think might be the reason for them feeling this way I think it's a lot of things. I think I mean it it might be part of it that it's coming from me and and whatever the, you know, I, depending on who the person is, they either might not believe me or they might think that what I I you know I'm just lucky or or whatever it is, but I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of different things that might just not be interested in what I have to say and I think that's been one of the realizations that I've had recently is not trying to convince people to do things that they're not genuinely interested in doing. Like I think there's a lot of um yeah i think that's that's one of the challenges that i've run into so i think again I, i don't know what the the persuasive wording would be but i i really do think that people can do anything and um there's just it would the the quote would be something around like you can do anything just perhaps not in the not in the taking the path that you think you're going to take like people sometimes are like okay i want to get to this point and they're like but i have to take this very linear path to get there and like i have to do like all these specific things and like the reality is you can get to that point but it's not going to look like how you imagine like if i had you know thinking back 5 years before today um looking at where i am now if i'd been like okay how did i get there i probably would have drawn out some weird path of like pure success and just like always mm-hmm. upward trajectory and like the reality is like that's not how it happened like that's not what i did to get to the point where i am now so i think having that realization and telling people and showing people that i think would would be helpful i i agree um i i totally agree with the point like you can do anything but the also the other other truth is that you would depending on depending on what you want to do you would have to work hard true sure. i think nothing comes uh, easy and it's it's so weird like people people often tell me uh you are you know like you are privileged and i'm like <laughs> dude i failed examinations twice like the j examinations for the j is basically the top most examination in india for getting into an engineering college i failed that twice so i did not get into a good college 
because they ask for physics chemistry maths and i'm not good at that <laughs> i'm good at maths but i'm not good at physics and chemistry so i failed that and i got into a very average college that does not offer any opportunity then i cgpa was also not that great attendance was not that great uh computer science curriculum in my college is not that great but open source i owe everything to open source so i think people only look at the end picture and they don't really look at like what the person has been through uh so i think you would have to work hard it takes time and nothing is going to happen overnight reach out to people to whom you can relate to and they would surely you know surely help you thanks for sharing logan cool um but yeah that's a good thing uh make sure you write it down and circle it twice you can do anything <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about Julia. How you got involved in Julia, and then we'll you know uh, wrap it up. Later, yeah. After a few more questions. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I, I got involved with while I was at community college. I was like, well, I really need an internship. So I I started applying at NASA, um, and eventually got lucky and made it in the door. And I I do think that initial. you know it was it was a little bit of hard work sending in the applications but again i didn't have any deep technical skills i was working at community college that was a lot of luck on my part um to get my first sort of initial break um but the second team that i was on at nasa actually was using julia so i started programming in julia and we were doing a bunch of visualization stuff and i had to start you know making open source contributions to understand better how to use this open source project that we were trying to leverage and then eventually um you alluded to earlier Kunal Google Code and um I eventually became a mentor and admin for the Julia language through Google Code and and that was sort of the 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 final straw um after that I reached out to the folks who were running Julia and I was like hey um you know I I did all this stuff for Google Code and I really wanted to do sort of more stuff like this in an official capacity and they they were grateful enough to to bring me on as the community manager after that cuz they they saw the work that I had done and I think the the cool sort of lesson for me in that experience was you know I did Google Code and not with like this agenda of okay I'm going to do this thing and then I'm going to get them to bring me on as the community manager or something like that like it really was like I was doing Google Code and stuff because I was like this is awesome, this is impactful. I it sucks that Google got rid of the Google Code and program because I was like to me it brought mm-hmm. a bunch of people into our community. It seemed like it was a positive program for everybody, so I I wish they still had it. Um but yeah, it it was a great experience and that's that's how I got yeah. started with Julia and the community. They 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 mentioned that they wanted to focus more on Google Summer of Code and Season of Docs. That was the reason. Mm-hmm. they uh, i mean that's fine oh up to the program and stuff but i i think like many students are still getting in high school students are still getting involved um much more now but uh, yeah that's cool all righty uh so just few last things like uh, what would you different what would you do differently you know if i'm talking about from a let's say from the college point starting like when you first got into college things that you would do differently and what advice would you have for young people who are just getting started in the field. Yeah, that's a good question. I think I I would have been more involved in open source perhaps if I I think I originally didn't understand like again this is one of the most difficult problems when you're first getting started in college is it's this chicken and the egg problem. You you want to get an internship and a job um but the internships and the jobs require experience but the ways to get experience <laughs> require an internship and a job so you it's like this never ending cycle and i was in that never ending cycle like i you know send in thousands and thousands of applications trying to get internships um and and really nothing worked out for me so i think if i had been aware of the opportunities in open source that are permissionless like you just show up and do the work and like you're good to go and that's what i love about it um I I wish that I had known about that in school and it, it probably would have put me on a different path. Again, grateful that things ended up okay for me, but I, it would have been nice to get involved with open source a little bit sooner. I agree. In first year, we we usually apply for interns in like second year end and then they are they ask for like resume and stuff. So in order to fill that up, people take some, you know, internships or like something like that is not that beneficial but they only want to fill up their resume i think open source can help you in this like uh projects and skills and things to showcase for so if you're in your freshman year or sophomore year you're looking forward to gain experience so that you can apply in your junior year for internships 
and then for a new grad role open source can definitely help you in that yeah thanks for sharing logan um just one last question what is what's next for you <laughs> yeah that's a that's a good question i'm just trying to at this point just trying to stay afloat i've got i've got a lot of things that i'm you know juggling at the same time so if i can just keep making progress on all those things i'm not sure if there's any any big plans i think you know you and me have some interesting things cooking up for the future perhaps um so yeah i'm i'm excited i think the one one thing that i always try to keep in mind and uh in general in life is like i don't know what five years from now is going to look like i don't know what what 10 years from now is going to look like it could be completely different than the way that i imagine it but what i'm what i'm deeply focused on is you know wh what can i do in the next year what can i do in the next month the next week to make sure that i'm pushing towards something that's positive and again i i don't know exactly what it's going to look like but i want to make sure that i'm learning that i'm you know getting better all of those things um, and i think that's that mindset has really helped me and if i had been fixated on you know here's what this version of myself or this version of my career that i wanted to look like in five years i think i might miss some of the really cool opportunities that i've got a chance to do like doing julia community stuff um you know being in, like going to uh you know northwestern or one of these things like i don't think i would have had those experiences and gotten the opportunity if i'd been too fixated on like some specific goal in the future so just trying to stay you know flexible in, in what happens in the future yeah thanks a lot for sharing logan and i agree I, uh, and so whenever someone asks me where are you going to be like five years from now i just say you know one million uh, subscribers. <laughs> no, At not least that. A million I, subscribers. <laughs> I say twenty twenty six. That's a good one. That is good. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm taking that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I I have no idea. You know, five years down the line, I I don't know. I, I don't even know what I'm doing. But I'm doing like two years down the line. M maximum to maximum, I know like one year down the line what I'm doing. But um, I do have some plans. Like let's say some way some some plans that i have for like few years down the line like what i want to do but you know things change so um yeah let's see all right well thanks a lot for joining logan really really appreciate it uh if if you all want to get connected uh, links are in the description and i'll also leave some links to the you know julia and other open source communities that you can be a part of and yeah really appreciate it and uh, thanks a lot for watching everyone we'll see you in the next one bye